Chapter 6. Chapter 6 words. The first word is amenable, or amenable. It means cooperative, or willing to live by rules. As you'll see, Pearl is not amenable. Anathema is a curse, or someone who is cursed. I'm quick to cast anathemas at callous 8th grade girls with no souls. The third word is labyrinth, which is a kind of intricate word for maze. And that's it. Labyrinth, maze. Chapter 6 is entitled Pearl, and it basically boils down to this one idea, that Pearl is an unmitigated brat. She is basically um, the poster child for Puritan ADHD, and uh, a good douse of Ritalin, or perhaps the truth, will settle her down eventually. Okay, I have a confession. I'm not a big fan of chapter 6, so I'll make this quick. Uh, the first quote can be found on chapter 3, and it really kind of epitomizes Pearl's overall character. Her nature appeared to possess depth, too, as well as variety. But, or else Hester's fears deceived her, it lacked reference and adaptation to the world until which she was born. The child could not be made amenable to rules. In giving her existence, a great law had been broken, and the result was a being whose elements were perhaps beautiful and brilliant, but all in disorder, or with an order peculiar to themselves, amidst which the point of variety and arrangement was difficult or impossible to be discovered. That Pearl was born from sin is important, but it's not as important as the idea that she is something new, something that is outside of the Puritan law. Very much like Hester in her own sphere outside of the town, but Pearl's um, whole demeanor, her whole makeup, is something that the Puritans had never seen before, and will unlikely ever see again. Wherever Hester goes, Pearl follows, whether she's at first being carried or toddling behind her. It's important to understand that Pearl was just as much uh, an object of ridicule as Hester's scarlet letter. Pearl manifests this notice. In the afternoon of a certain summer's day, after Pearl grew big enough to run about, she amused herself with gathering handfuls of wild flowers and flinging them one by one at her mother's bosom, dancing up and down like a little elf whenever she hit the scarlet letter. Can you imagine poor Hester? I mean, there's a little pearl, bing, and it hits the scarlet letter, or in this case, the scarlet letter, and bing, and so it just hits whore, bing, slut, bing, malefactress, bing. I imagine Hester felt a little annoyed at this. But it was, to a certain extent, Pearl's job. Now Hester does try to raise Pearl in a way in which she is accustomed. She asks her child in paragraph 13, Child, what art thou? cried the mother. Paragraph 20, Tell me, mother, said the child, seriously, coming up to Hester and pressing herself close to her knees. Do thou tell me. Remember, she's three, year old, three years old at this point. Thy heavenly Father sent thee, answered Hester Prynne. But she said it with a hesitation that did not escape the acuteness of the child, whether moved only by her ordinary freakishness, or because an evil spirit prompted her. She put up her small forefinger and touched the scarlet letter. He did not send me, cried she, positively. I have no heavenly Father. Now, you can imagine... Um, in Puritan Boston, this isn't the best thing for a three-year-old to be saying. Hush, Pearl, hush! Thou must not talk so, answered the mother, suppressing a groan. He sent us all into this world. He sent even me, thy mother. Then much more thee. Or, if not, thou strange and elfish child, whence didst thou come? Tell me, tell me, repeated Pearl no longer seriously, but laughing and capering about the floor. It is thou that must tell me. Pearl's defiant, and will remain so until she knows exactly from where and from whom she comes. <laughs>